good morning everyone with the continuation of uh, anatomy of stomach today we are going to deal with the some general features of small intestine so let's start so here this end is the cardiac end where the lower end of esophagus gets connected with the upper end of the stomach this is nothing but cardiac end and this is the pyloric end of the stomach as we had discussed in the previous video and then from here the small intestine will get started and before entering into the small intestine let me tell you that the small intestine is divided into two parts based upon the mobility one is upper fixed upper fixed part that is duodenum which is this one upper fixed part of small intestine which is called as duodenum then lower mobile part this mobile part is divided into two that is two fifth and three fifth then this two fifth is jejunum and this three fifth is ileum let me show you so as a continuation from the duodenum jejunum arises and which forms the two fifth of the small intestine and from that then extends the ileum which forms the three fifth of the small intestine and it gets connected with the cecum in the ileocecal junction and this is the uh, cecum which forms the first part of large intestine as we all know so this is the ileocecal junction okay so this is the exact thing regarding the small intestine and let us see regarding the length of small intestine it is 6 meters so we will be discussing in next videos uh, regarding every part of the small intestine separately like duodenum jejunum and ileum for more clarification so now we are going to discuss regarding the special features of small intestine because this small intestine is designed mainly for digestion and absorption. So let's see how these functions are carried out in an efficient way, mainly digestion and absorption. So first thing is large surface area. This large surface area of small intestine is mainly because of the length which is around 6 meters and the special feature of small intestine another one is circular folds of mucous membrane. Circular folds of mucous membrane. So this circular folds, now we are going to discuss regarding these circular folds of uh, small intestine in particular to know how it is promoting the efficiency in absorption. So, the circular folds of small intestine were also called as plicae circularis or valve of Kickering. And this plicae 71 is sorry, circularis or valve of Kickering arises mainly from the second part of duodenum and it become prominent at the proximal half of jejunum. After that, the size of the um, mucosal folds gets reduced. So, next to the circular folds of mucous membrane, we should know regarding the villi and microvilli, which also helps in the surface, increase in the surface area, villi and microvilli. So, now, Let's see regarding the intestinal villi which helps in the increase in surface area of small intestine and which promotes absorption in a very better way. So, in this uh, lining of small intestine, we are having the finger-like projections which were also called as intestinal villi and this intestinal villi are increasing the surface area up to 8 times more than the normal surface area because of its presence and this intestinal villi are mainly seen in duodenum and jejunum. And if we are looking at the on examination, we can see some velvety appearance and in this microvilli, we used to see some striated border and the tips of the microvilli, tips of the villi and this striated border were called as microvilli which is also helping in promoting the absorptive action of the intestine. So, let's see the first special feature is large surface area and this large surface area is mainly because of the greater length of the small intestine and because of circular folds of mucous membrane and because of the presence of villi and microvilli as I had told and the circular folds we know it is called as plicae circularis or valves of Kickering and it is mainly starting from the second part of duodenum and it, is, and it ends in the proximal part of jejunum and then regarding the intestinal villi it increases nearly eight times uh, the absorptive capacity or surface area of small intestine and it is seen mainly in jejunum and duodenum and it gives velvety appearance and in the end of the villi we are having some striated border which were called as microvilli. So now we are going to discuss regarding the glands present in the small intestine which forms the second special feature regarding the glands. So here the glands are of two types one is intestinal glands and one is duodenal glands. Intestinal glands 
are crypts of Liberkin. And second comes duodenal glands, which were also called as Brunner's gland. So now, let's see regarding this intestinal glands. These intestinal glands are simple tubular glands present on jejunum and ileum. Mainly they are seen in jejunum and ileum. And actually, uh, normally the villi usually present in this way. And these glands are mainly seen between this villus. This glands usually located in the intestinal wall in this area. And here, this epithelial cells usually have high mitotic activity. Mitotic activity is nothing but proliferation. So, because of the proliferation, this cells move towards the villi and gets replaced at every time. So, here, the cells are present, these glands are present here and these uh, glands are having the epithelial cells which show high mitotic activity. And because of high mitotic activity, there will be more proliferation of cells and that cells usually move towards the tip of the villi and they get replaced. So, if we are seeing, usually our intestinal lining gets replaced completely within 2 to 4 days normally. So, that is the most interesting thing. And now, let's talk regarding the duodenal glands or Brunner's gland. So, this duodenal gland or Brunner's gland are mainly seen in the submucosa. Submucosa and they are compound tubular as tubulo asinar glands. Compound tubulo asinar glands. We will discuss regarding this different types of glands in some other separate video in detail. So, this uh, Brunner's gland are compound tubulo asinar glands and they used to secrete mucus and they are seen mainly in the duodenum as the name itself mentioning it clearly. Now, we are going to see regarding the third special feature of small intestine. That is none other than the lymphatic follicles. So, we all know uh, regarding the lymph system how it is working. So, here in case of small intestine, we are having two different types of lymphatic follicles. One is solitary lymphatic follicles, which is present throughout the small intestine. And next one is aggregated, which is also called as Peyer's patches. Aggregated lymphatic follicles are Peyer's patches and they are oval or circular in shape and they are mainly present in the anti mesenteric border of intestine. Circular in shape and anti mesenteric border they are present and once if they are getting uh, like in case of uh, typhoid diseases we can see ulceration of Peyer's patches. That is more uh, specification for this Peyer's patches there will be ulceration and during any weaning period we will we can see the inflammation of Peyer's patches leading to intersusception or intestinal obstruction type of things in case of pediatric age group. These are the importance of this Peyer's patches like typhoid and during weaning there will be inflammation leading to the intestinal obstruction. So, these are all the special features of small intestine. Before you are getting in detail regarding the duodenum, jejunum and ileum, you should know these things very clearly and thank you so much.